Hello. We left off recently with this uh, Super Beta video recorder, which seems to have multiple faults. There's uh, a problem that the display is all lit up, all the characters lit up. It's doing crazy things like continuously lacing and unlacing. And now the lacing mechanism is broken, it would appear. So I've got work to do on that. Another thing I wanted to briefly mention was some, something I've had arrive today. Some time ago, I mentioned that there's sensors in Betamax video recorders such as this, that's in, there's a, a hall effect sensor in the head drum. There's also some on the reel tables. And they can fail and cause the head drum to just stop. And it stops in a particular way because it, it won't even spin if you try to push it with your fingers in the fault condition. And there's a four pin hall effect sensor, which is quite hard to get hold of. Well, I've got hold of several. So if you'd like me to demonstrate installing one of these, uh, let me know and I'll, uh, I don't have a machine with a defective Hall Effect switch, uh, sensor, but I'll have to sort of demonstrate the fault and show how to install one of these. And the proper way, you might say, is to take the whole of the head drum assembly out and change the component uh, where it's sold onto a PCB. But I've actually found you don't have to do that. You can cut the pins to it but it's a little bit fiddly, so let me know if you'd like to see that. Right, on to the Super Beta. Now, when we were looking at this a few days ago, uh, it was behaving strangely, both the display being all lit up and the way it was doing mad things, which implied somewhat that it was a power supply fault. But the power supply seemed okay. The only voltage I could find a discrepancy with was an input voltage to the regulator. But... Those regulators, STK5441, I think it is, they have a bit of a reputation for being unreliable. So I've ordered one. Well, I've ordered two because my first order from Italy on eBay got rejected. I think he couldn't handle post-Brexit delivery uh, of parts to the UK. So I had to order some from uh, China, which is costing me a lot more. But, uh, you know, wonders of Brexit. I'm also wondering if, despite this apparently doing the right voltages, there may be a, a power supply discrepancy on the syscon board, which would be in here somewhere. So I'll look at that later too. But right now the problem was, that I was seeing, was when I first got it, it was continuously lacing and unlacing. And then it got itself into a situation where this side would lace and that side would not which means we've got a problem with the gearing in here, which is a bit unpleasant, but uh, I think that's going to need fixing anyway. So I think we'll have a look at that mechanical problem before we get involved in the electronics. And I'll just uh, demonstrate that briefly. I'll just power it up and we'll see what it does. And if we see this side load and this side not, then we know we're still very much in that position. Okay, so I'll power it up, and the, the thing I was worried that I saw the other day was that this side was lacing and unlacing, and this side was not. Is that still the case? Power up. So that side's moving, and that side's not. Oh, and then it's making an awful noise. I'll power it just to get, it, to get in the unlaced position again, and then I'll take this apart. Right, it's more or less unlaced. So let's dismantle all this. Um, there is a, a drive that fails, but it shouldn't get into a situation like it is where only one side is operating. So we need to investigate that. Right, see that? That side's lacing and that side's not. That shouldn't happen. I'm just going to uh, manually eject the cassette. Do you see that? If I give this a push, 
then it will start lacing. So that appears to be properly laced now. Go for unlace. So why doing lace? Is this side not starting properly? That might imply stripped teeth, which could be quite bad. Now dry for this side goes through this gear here. And in fact, you hear that horrible clanking noise we heard earlier. That happens if this side is overdriven and the drive gear slips underneath the toothed rack. Drive for the other side, I forget exactly where it is, so we'll need to investigate. These guards here appear to have um, separated from where they're supposed to be. So I think they should have retracted. Oh, that's looking extremely bad. These should have gone past here on the unlace. Right, you can see here that these guides I was showing you just now that are supposed to be on that far loading ring, they're driven by this piece of plastic here, which is supposed to be connected to here, but appears to have snapped off. So uh, that's going to be tricky to fix. So this has become detached here, it's snapped off. That's very unfortunate. So the plastic piece here, it looks like it, sh it slides into this piece. Further examination of the previous video I showed of this machine when this is in, well, was in working order, or well, this part was, it shows that the connection between here and here, this piece that sticks out, there should be a spring on that, so the spring is presumably pinged off somewhere inside the machine. We need to find that. So I've got a much bigger problem now. Whatever is wrong with this machine, it's now also got this severe mechanical problem. Now I've pulled out a SLC30 from my storeroom. Let's have a look at the uh, deck on that. I have now located the spring that's pinged off. All right, here's the C30. And just looking at the mechanism. There is the spring and the connection between these two parts. Getting to that could be very hard. Might it be possible to pop this out of here and take this off without stripping the whole thing down? Looking at the broken component on our machine that we're trying to fix, let's see if we can get that piece of broken plastic out by just popping it out. And if we can, we can then swap it, hopefully, with the one from the scrap deck. Okay, there's a broken one out. Is it possible to liberate this, this uh, spare one? I'm not going to get the access I need, so I'm going to have to release all the screws here on this top section, I think, and see if I can gain access to this component once I've undone all those screws. Right, that's the entire assembly complete with the plastic and the spring and everything. The only trouble with doing it that way 
is of course this alignment is going to be set for this C30 and so it might be subtly different and I may have to set the alignment up if ever I get the uh, Super Beta running but uh, at least I was able to get that out so uh, I should be able to insert that into the other deck right so this is our target machine so I need to do the same thing release these screws and then get this off and drop the new one in I undid this one on the C30 but I'm pretty sure I don't need to great care not to touch your head tips Okay, that's the broken one, um, and that's the good one, but like I said, I'd rather not mess up the alignment, so perhaps I can just release it from here. How would I do that? Slacken off this screw and take it out. Perhaps, let's have a look at that. Right, done. That actually is subtly different design on the older machine. The clasps both go all the way round on both sides, and on the newer one, the outer clasp goes all the way round, and the inner clasp is somewhat shorter. Don't know why that would be. So hopefully now we can drop this in and install it along its track. I might have to do this bit off camera because I need slightly better access than I can get with you looking down on it, so bear with me. Okay, I've uh, reassembled it and it's going from the fully unlaced position to lacing properly, taking the guide with it. And that's the original guide, so we shouldn't have any alignment issues. So we should definitely treat that as a small win. I've reassembled this, uh, and as far as I can tell, the components of the deck are now properly timed. But there's always a possibility that we're one tooth out here, one way or the other. So we'll have to worry about that later when we have power to this. But I don't want to power it up again, because it'll start that lacing and unlacing thing and uh, it could potentially damage itself so I'm going to wait now until we have the STK5441 uh, regulator component uh, it may not be that there's a problem with the regulator but it makes sense to change that that's on this board here so we'll change that and then we'll see where we are now another thing is I've been told it says here that it's uh, beta 2 and 3 speeds. If you know your NTSC beta machines, they can run up to 3 speeds. This one can play back beta 1. And it's also super beta. But I've been informed that it does not play back super beta 1 speed tapes, which is kind of what I wanted it to do. But never mind, uh, that's... a uh, a minor problem really I just want to get the machine going again just looking here at the SLC 20 this is the Hall effect sensor I've been talking about so the in theory what you'd have to do is take this magnet effectively off and take this whole PCB out so the way to get that PCB out is to remove the entire head drum assembly but that is risky and I know somebody who was doing that and they managed to smash the head tips it wasn't me so really it's a, a bit of a pain but rather than do that if you just take this nut off and pull this off it's held on magnetically you can actually get the four pins on the Hall effect sensor 
it is important to mount it the right way up. And I have in the past raided those Hall Effect sensors from the other side of here, from a scrap machine such as this is. In fact, I think they have been raided off this. Uh, the uh, real motors use the same kind of sensors, but they're mounted the other way up, so you've got to watch that. But now we have a supply of what I hope are the correct Hall Effect sensors. So what I'm going to do at some point is try to demonstrate what happens when that fails. What happens is it locks the motor. So you can't even turn it when the machine's powered up. Uh, so demonstrate that, then cut these off. And what you do is cut them as far up the pin, so as close to the sensor as you can. Discard the old sensor. And then with the microscope I can solder the replacement on. Now the reason these fail, at least in part, is due to the glue they've used. They use a kind of glue that attracts water. But cleaning the glue off, in my experience, never fixes it. Uh, I've seen it written on the PAL site that you can just clean the glue off and it'll often work, but I've never had it work. So I just replaced the sensor. Right, so uh, that's for another day. Now what we're really interested in fixing, of course, is this beautiful Super Beta. Notice how the chassis has got carry handles in it. That's attention to detail, isn't it? Now, my impression was that looking back on the original video material, and you can see it when I first started working on this machine, that the uh, lacing mechanism was intact at that time. So did it smash itself up due to the repeated lacing and unlacing uh, cycle that the machine was doing due to its defect? Or was it fractured and going to sn uh, snap anyway? We can never know, but at least it's in one piece now. So do come by and uh, see me working on this and other audio and video equipment in the near future. Bye for now. Yeah.